Today I'd like to talk about why Bitcoin nodes are so important. If you're new to the channel, my name is Steven. I've been studying Bitcoin for the past three years, and I feel like really now is the time to distill and condense all the information that I've learned over that period of time and make them into videos to share with you guys. Because I honestly believe that Bitcoin is the ultimate freedom technology for your money and for your time. So without further ado, let's get started. The first reason I believe that Bitcoin nodes are important is because they keep the network decentralized. Each Bitcoin node is essentially a copy of the Bitcoin ledger, the entire Bitcoin ledger from its Genesis block back in 2009. Therefore, the more nodes that are operating in the world, the more copies of the Bitcoin ledger there are. And that makes the network very resilient to attacks. For example, if we had all the Bitcoin transactions stored on one server, all somebody has to do is to attack that single server and the Bitcoin network will be down. However, right now, there are thousands of Bitcoin nodes running all over the world and it's impossible, well nearly impossible, to attack all the nodes at once. So a few nodes can go down, but as, but as long as there are nodes running, then the network will always function properly. And this is one of the main reasons why nodes are so important. Another reason Bitcoin nodes are important is because they help maintain and facilitate the network protocol. If there are transactions coming into the network that are not following protocol rules, nodes are the ones that reject those transactions. Without nodes that are following the protocol, there will always be bad actors that try to cheat the system and try to change the rules of the protocol. Therefore, the more nodes we have that are following the consensus rules of the network, the stronger the network becomes. This means that if you run a Bitcoin node, you're essentially casting a vote for what you want for the future of the Bitcoin network. On top of keeping the Bitcoin network decentralized, nodes also help you gain self-sovereignty. If you're not running a Bitcoin node, when you're using any kind of wallet, you're essentially connecting to another person's node. And that person dictates what you can do with your Bitcoin. Because if their node goes down, then you can't access your funds. If you run a Bitcoin node, you'll be your own bank because you get to verify your own transactions using your own node and nobody can shut down your node. So you know that you always have access to your funds. Running your own Bitcoin node also helps with privacy. If you're using somebody else's node and you broadcast a transaction to the Bitcoin network, that third party knows your transaction details. If you run your own node, you can broadcast it from your own server. And if you do it this way, no third party will know about your transaction information. And since you don't have to choose to use a third party to access the Bitcoin network, it gives you even more power over the third party service providers because you can just choose to use them as a backup if your own node fails. You also learn a lot of things by deciding to run your own Bitcoin node. You'll learn how to set one up from scratch, either using an old computer, using a Raspberry Pi, or simply buying hardware that's already set up by a third party. You'll learn how the Bitcoin network works. You'll learn how to connect your own wallet to your own node and you'll also learn how to broadcast your own transactions. And once you've learned all the basics, you can choose to dive even deeper down the rabbit hole by learning about the Lightning Network as well as Bitcoin mining. And finally, running your own Bitcoin node not only helps you, it also helps the people around you. Because for beginners that don't know much about the Bitcoin network, they'll want somebody to hold their hand and guide them through the whole process. And if you run your Bitcoin node, you can help those people set up everything. You can essentially be their bank and help them gain financial freedom. Now, if you stay this far into the video, you're probably pretty curious about setting up your own node. And in my opinion, there are three easy ways to do it. Bitcoin Core, Umbro OS, or Start9 Labs. Bitcoin Core can be installed on any old laptop that has at least one terabyte hard drive. 
Umbro OS can be installed on their custom hardware or it can run on an old laptop or it can be run on a Raspberry Pi. And finally, Start 9 can be installed on their custom hardware as well. And you can also run Start 9 on a laptop. I'll put links to the three options down below so you can go check them out and see which option is best for you. For my node, I'm running Umbro OS installed on a Raspberry Pi. Let me give you a little tour of what my node looks like. Okay guys, so as I said, this is a little overview of my current node. The flashing part right there, that's the hard drive. That's where the Bitcoin ledger is kept. And the machine on top is a Raspberry Pi. Uh, three years ago, I think this whole setup cost me about $300. My hard hard drive space is running out soon. A one terabyte hard drive space will be no longer viable for running a Bitcoin node, I think, starting sometime next year around June, because the ledger keeps growing and the total blocks, they're coming up to around 800 something gigs now. So, uh, so a one terabyte drive might not be enough anymore for the next uh, starting next June. Now uh, let me take you inside the Umbro OS and show you what that's like. Okay, welcome to my Umbro OS. Like I said before, since my hard drive is almost full, 822 gigabytes out of the 983 gigabytes available, I didn't really install any other software. This is purely just to run my Bitcoin node. which is synced right now to block 862,407. And the last block came in 14 minutes ago. And it's also to run Electrum. Electrum is the software that I use to connect my desktop wallet to my node. Now, if you guys get a new hardware, there's a lot of things that you can install if you run Umbro. For example, there is AdGuard Home. I think this is something of like an ad blocker for your own home server. This app right here, high performance photo and video backup solution. So instead of backing everything up to iCloud, or Google servers, you can choose to back it up to your Umbro. At the same time, there are also other apps like AFine. This is like an open source alternative to Notion, which is also pretty cool. Unfortunately, I haven't really had the chance to try out these programs because, like I said, there is hardware limitations for my node right now. It can only focus on running a Bitcoin node and Electrum server. I plan on getting a new hardware from Umbro themselves sometime around maybe the end of this year or beginning of next year. Because usually they do sales around Boxing Day or Black Friday. Because if we do some calculations, we still have 983 minus 822, 161 gigabytes left. So if we do two megabyte blocks times 144 blocks a day times 365 days a year divided by 1000. So roughly over the next year, the Bitcoin ledger will grow at approximately uh, 105 gigabytes. It'll grow for another 105 gigabytes. So that would put me at 827 gigabytes, which is very close to the limit of this, of this one terabyte hard drive. So before, I think I said that one terabyte hard drives will not be viable starting around June. 
I still stick by that because I'm only going with the average block size of two megabytes. Who knows? Like it's always good to leave more space for uh, for safety, right? It's always to have more space needed. Therefore, when I upgrade, I'm going to go with a two terabyte option. This way, my node will be completely future proof because two terabytes is a lot of storage. So yeah, there you have it. And cost wise, if we go to Umbro's website right now, uh, they're selling their Umbro home for $569, which I think is actually a pretty good deal because it contains a, it comes with a two terabyte SSD. And nowadays, if we buy our own two terabyte SSD, that's already a hundred something, $200 right there. And on top of that, we still need to get a, an old computer or a Raspberry Pi. And you know what, let me go to Google and check it out. Raspberry Pi. Yeah, Raspberry Pi 5. Let's see how much they're going for. Uh, Canada. Yes. Yeah, they're going for about a hundred, a hundred and twelve dollars, and then a two terabyte H SSD, Amazon.ca. Crucial two terabyte SSD. Exactly. So, so this is the one that I use. I'm using the one terabyte version right now. So the two terabyte version uh, for this hard drive, it costs $214. That with a Raspberry Pi, which is 112, that already brings us up to $325. And then we still need to get a case for the hard drive. So like case, cable, everything, that's 250 raspberry pi 112 so that's already 360 and then we need to get another sd card for the operating system so roughly around 400 dollars. so i think like if you want to save a hundred dollars by all means uh, i i think that's that's a good option too but i think for 569 dollars and be, be, be and to be able to get something that's made by umbro uh, and that will probably last a long time. I think it's worth it because with a hundred and a hundred dollars amortized over, let's say five years, that's that's twenty dollars a year that you're saving. And, and to be honest, I just like the simplicity. And I think the Umbro Home is tax included. So if you buy it, you're just paying five sixty nine, and that's it. Yeah, everything is included in the price. Yeah, so I think I think when my hard drive fills up, I'm going to go for a Umbro home. And yeah, so yeah, all right. So this is a tour of my node and the setup that I'm using. If you like today's video and want to learn more about Bitcoin, make sure to check out my previous videos. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.